Hi, today we're going to be looking at this diagnostic tool. This is the Launch Creda Elite 2.0. And last year we reviewed the Launch Creda Elite. This is the new version of it. And these are little tools that are designed for specific brands of vehicles so that you don't have to buy a more fully featured diagnostic tool if you only have one vehicle in your household, for example. So this one is designed for BMW cars, but the same tool can be used with Mercedes-Benz as well as uh, Volkswagen Group. But also interestingly in the mall, uh, which is the little um, area on here where you can purchase additional options, you can actually buy the software for other brands. So for example, we've got a Ford in this household, we could go to the mall, buy the Ford brand, and then we'd be able to diagnose the BMW as well as the Ford without having to buy another tool. And the nice thing about this tool is that the updates are free for life. We've got full functionality so we can do uh, diagnostics of every single module in the car, not just the ECU. We can do code resets and we can also do bi-directional control. So we're able to control any of the modules in this car. Now in a recent review, I did a diagnostic tool that had bi-directional controls and I tested that in the Ford, but there were limited options. Now on the BMW, there are a significant number of options on here. You can control pretty much every actuator in the vehicle. So what we're going to do is we're just going to have a look at the tool first of all, have a look how it connects to the vehicle, see if we've got any fault codes on this car. I'm pretty sure we do. I think there's always one to do with the two catalytic converters and I'll show you how to clear them and then we'll have a look at the uh, live data and we'll have a look at the bi-directional controls. Right, so I've just connected it to the vehicle but it has asked for a firmware update so it's just quickly updating the firmware from 12.11 to 12.12. One thing to note about this tool is it doesn't require any kind of registration, so you just power it up and it works straight away. Some of the other tools, you do need to have an internet connection for it to validate the license, but that's no issue on this tool, which is great. If you do want to keep this tool just in your glove box and use it if you're out stranded somewhere, it will just work without any trouble. Okay, so it's done the update, so we'll click on Diagnose, and then we can click on BMW. Now you can do auto detect, but it doesn't always work for every vehicle. Sometimes it gives up before it's finished working out what protocol it's using for the diagnostic interface. So we'll just click on BMW here, press OK, and it should connect to the OBD2 port on here without any trouble. So you'll notice this tool is a little bit slower than some of the other tools at trying to find all the different modules on the vehicle. Some of the more advanced tools can do multiple searches for multiple modules all at once on the different buses simultaneously. This one sequentially goes through and tries to detect every possible module that could be fitted to this particular vehicle. So it does take a couple of minutes. Now one thing that I found with the Creda Elite is that when I went to use this a couple of months ago it did actually take about 10 minutes to do this search. Uh, but this one seems to be going nice and quickly. And then we can do things like health reports. So this is very similar to the other launch and similar tools. It's got the same kind of menu interface here. So a health report goes through and checks for codes on every module. So we may as well do that first. So we've got two codes on the ECM. I do expect this to be the two catalytic converters, but we'll see what happens. Right, it's pretty much done, 100%. Now this did take quite a long time, and I think this is what I found with the other version of the tool as well, is that even though it went through at the beginning and checked which modules were present, when it does a diagnostic full check, it still checks for every single module instead of just the ones that it detected the first time round. But here we are, we've got the diagnostic trouble codes and yeah, we've got the two um, catalytic converters. Now this is a really weird fault because the emissions test out absolutely fine. You look at the live data and it's fine. It just randomly gets triggered. Both of the converters, it's a six cylinder engine, they both get triggered at exactly the same moment, like there's some glitch that happens and then you don't see it again for months. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear the codes and it will go through And in fact, it looks like it clears the code on every single module, even though not all of them had it. And then that has got rid of that issue. So you can see here, 
uh, we've got no fault codes on any of the modules. Now obviously that doesn't fix the issue if you actually have a genuine problem, uh, but that will have got rid of any code that was being stored. So now that we've done the health report, what we can do is we can go to individual modules. So rather than going through and scanning every single module that's in the car again, if we know we want to have a look at a specific module, we can pick that one. So we can click on um, system selection and then it's grouped by drivetrain, chassis and body. So if we want to look at the ECM, we can go into here, for example, press continue. And then it's got the fairly familiar menu structure that we see on most of these tools. So things like reading fault codes, clearing fault codes, reading data stream, reading freeze frame data, and the actuation test. So we shouldn't have any fault codes now we've cleared them. And we can go into read data stream. And the vehicle has grouped these into nice groups. This isn't done by the tool, this is done by uh, the vehicle. And if you use the BMW tool, it will do exactly the same thing here. So we can look at things like the idle control, and it's got engine idle, speed, and idle speed, and it will show them on here. So it's aiming for 720 RPM, and you can see it fluctuating about once per second, uh, showing what's actually happening. And if we want to, we can plot this. So we can do a graph there, and if I press the accelerator pod up pedal, we can see the engine speed change. So yeah, it's plotting at about one hertz. We could look at some other ones. So we've got things like the ambient temperature, coolant temperature, oil temperature, uh, mass airflow, and we can plot those together. So we've got a temperature of about 105 degrees C. Uh, if you remember, I did a repair on the uh, electric water pump. This one can control the temperature of the water so that the engine runs as efficiently as possible. And if we want to, we can plot all of these on one graph by clicking Combine, and then you can pick the data points that you want to plot on the graph, press OK, and it will plot them together on here, and it will do it about once per second again for each data point, so you can look at multiple things at once. Then we can have a look at the actuation test. So these are some of the bi-directional controls that we have of the vehicle. So we've got things like um, turning on the fan, and we've got some stuff to do with the electric coolant pump. Now, most of these you have to do with the engine not running uh, because they will affect the operation of the engine. But if we go to a different module instead, so we can go to the footwell module, that is uh, the body control module on this car, and go through, and if we click on actuation test here, we can test various things that are connected to that footwell module. So, for example, we've got the illumination inside the vehicle, and if we click on interior lighting here, we can activate it for 15 seconds. And basically what this does is it checks the control to the lights, and then you can also check that the lights turn on physically. And you might just be able to see there's a bit of illumination down here in the footwell area where it turns on those lights for 15 seconds. And then we've got some others, for example, the by and shutter. So this has Zenon headlights. And what this will do is it will trigger the shutter to open on the headlights for 15 seconds as if you're flashing the high beam. So press active. And as you can see, it's illuminated with full beam. Now these might seem like quite trivial things with the lighting, but these actuation tests can be done with pretty much every uh, item that's in the car. Every lamp, every motor, every solenoid can be triggered through this system, which means that it's got an incredibly powerful capability for diagnostics. So for example, you might think just um, flashing the hazard lights outside you'd just be able to press the hazard light uh, button in the centre console. But the problem is, that could be an issue with the button itself, it could be an issue with the system reading the state of the button, or it could be a problem with driving the lights. And what we can do is, we can trigger those external hazard lights from this module, and that will tell you whether the wiring integrity between the module and the lights is correct. And if the lights illuminate, then we know it's not there, and we probably need to look further back for the reason why that signal should be active. And the same thing is the case for the engine management function. So for example, if we've got a misfire uh, and we don't know if it's um, that we've got a problem with the fuel injector, you can actually get it to trigger the fuel injector and we can look for a spray in there or you can hear it or you can look for the current waveform and see if you can actually trigger it to spray some fuel. 
And if it allows you to do that, but, it, but you're getting a misfire and you're not getting any fuel while the engine's running, then you know there's a reason behind that. You know it's not a problem with the wiring and it's a reason, uh, is something to do with the ECM telling it not to fire in that cylinder uh, because you've got a, another problem in the system. So conversely, if we go into here, for example, for the Byzenon shield, and we click on output, this tells you what the vehicle thinks should be happening. So let's say we've always got the Byzenon shutter open. Here it thinks it's off. And if I trigger it, you can see it turns on and off. This is me flashing the lights. But if we see this is triggering on and off, but you've actually got the full beams on all the time, then we know we've got a problem either with the solenoid being stuck on, either electrically or it's mechanically stuck. So um, a whole range of diagnostics that you can do from the bi-directional tools here. So far we've looked at how to read codes, how to clear codes, how to look at live data, graph live data, and also how to use the bi-directional controls. The remaining things are things like the resets and the learning functions, uh, because this tool can actually do everything on the vehicle for any kind of service function. So we can go into here and we can click on special functions and then this is where we can do things like resetting the oil service light, but also some of the resets. So uh, we've got things like initializing the rain sensor if you installed a new unit. Uh, we've got some of the things to do with uh, replacing the battery so it resets the state of charge. Uh, we've got things like the brake, uh, brake bleeding routine. So if you've replaced uh, an item in the braking system and you want to purge all of the air from it, you can use this tool to do that. Um, so a whole variety of service functions in here. So that's the diagnose function. The OBD2 is the OBD2 generic codes. This can be a useful place to check if you're getting some weird readings on the manufacturer specific codes, you can read just the generic data. Uh, but it gives exactly the same menu format. And then the only other thing of interest here is the mall, uh, which I was mentioning before, which allows you to add licenses for additional vehicles, which I think is a really nice feature. Um, so if we go through here, it's just going to search, and then we can add pretty much any vehicle to the system. So for example, as I said, I've got a Ford, and we've got Ford here, $76. That installs the software on here, and then I can do full diagnostics on that vehicle for life with free updates. So really nice. Um, if you've just got a couple of vehicles in your household, uh, you can just add them to it and this tool will work forever with those vehicles. So that's the launch Creda Elite 2.0 new for 2024. A really nice diagnostic tool for a DIYer if you just want to have something that's fairly low cost to allow you to do all of your servicing at home. So I hope you found the video useful. I'll put a link to this item in the description down below. If you've got any thoughts or comments, don't forget to leave them in the comments section. And until next time, thanks for watching.